Um, I'd like to call now uh, Ms. Shweta Menon. Uh, Ms. Shweta Menon is an architect and hospital planner. She is a university rank holder from Anna University in, in the Bachelor of Architecture. In her course, in her fourth year dissertation was on patient-friendly hospital design. She has also done a fifth year thesis on pediatric hospital design. She has three years experience of building new hospitals with the Archimedes, who are one of India's largest hospital architectural firms. She's going to speak to you on designing hospitals to be patient-centric, safe, secure, and friendly. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So what I'm here actually to cover, Doctor, you covered most of my, my topics in your presentation itself. So now I'll at least tell the architectural side of how we can make healthy hospitals, how we can make these hospitals patient-centric. Now what do you mean by patient-centric? It is it's making your patient happy. Your patient who comes into the hospital scared, worried, tensed, they must feel comfortable and at home when they are in your hospital. But one thing we must all keep in mind is that it's not enough just to make our patients happy. To make our patients happy, our doctors, our nurses, technicians, and all the people working in the hospital must also be happy. Because a happy caregiver equals to a happy patient. As architects, a main theme we all like to follow is the concept of form follows function. Now, this means that we design or we make a building to suit the function or the role of that building. We do not try to adjust our functions to fit into an already built structure or a structure just because it's very fancy and beautiful, you go ahead with it. That is not how things work. Now, to make a hospital perfect, how do you get the function, the functional aspect of this hospital? You get it only by discussing with doctors, discussing with nurses, actually sitting down and talking with them. Especially architects who haven't designed hospitals before, they need interaction with all the people who are in that healthcare environment and must understand what the basic requirements of a patient are before they actually design a hospital. Now, we might all think that patient-centric is a new theme that has come up, a new theme that now we in our generation has brought in and something innovative, but actually it's not. This is a theme that was introduced in 1850s itself by none other than Florence Nightingale. Now she came across this concept just in her experience during a Crimean war that happened and the British government sent her over to the war camp where she had to look after injured soldiers. She was told that the soldiers were dying in such large numbers that people didn't know how to handle it. So she and a group of nurses went there to take look after those soldiers. But when she reached there, she found out that all these soldiers were actually dying due to different infections they caught while they were in the hospital over there and not due to the war injuries. So she started taking steps and measures to improve the surroundings where the soldiers were uh, living so that their healing environment is a lot better and that therefore their state of mind remains a lot better, make them cheerful and give them a much more sanitary area. So by doing all these steps, she actually brought down the death rate from about 60% to about 2% in just six months. Now I'll just give you one example of what she did. She designed something called the Nightingale Ward. Now this is a design which we even now follow when we design hospitals. The, in this ward, she actually took a really long rectangular room and she arranged beds on opposite walls and made the nurse station at the head of the room where they have a clear line of sight of all the patients and in their beds. So this way, this is a concept we follow even now because it's very important for the nurses to know how the, what the state of the patients are and to immediately reach them at a short period of time. Now this concept is not the only concept she came up with. with from her experience in this war, she came up with three main concepts. Sanitation and infection control, environment theory, and she put all these together in her design and we call that evidence-based design. Now I'll link these theories with how our present architecture world works. A patient when they enter into a hospital must feel safe and secure. Now how do you make a patient feel that? We as architects can take care of maybe the building they are in, make sure that it is infection proof and give them a level of comfort. Now building we can control the access into the building 
the movement of the patient around the building and other safety regulations. Now access into the building, as you all know, because hospitals are such secure locations, we must minimize the amount of access into these hospitals. We must limit them to the bare minimum. And I'll tell you, a hospital actually needs only three basic entries. One being the emergency entry, one being the main entry which people normally use, and the other for services. So if you limit it to these numbers, you can supervise it easier. You can have your CCTV systems and all those things. Then movement within the hospital, this is taken care of by signages. Now you give proper strategic signages in different parts of the hospital, then your visitors and patients don't need help to reach their desired locations. And how does this help? This saves them time and saves all of you manpower. You don't have to give additional people to actually take your patients to their desired locations. And then of course safety regulations. Now these, as uh, Mr. Suresh and Mr. Ram have all said, these are certain standards, NABH standards, NBC codes, all those, which you might think when we design, it's like a, wa sorry, like a waste of space. Like when we say a staircase has to be two meter wide, then uh, the corridors have to be 2.4 meter wide. You might feel it's a waste of space, but put yourself in that location during a fire or in case of an emergency. Can you imagine two, three stretchers or two, three wheelchairs going past each other or people rushing through that space? It's hard to imagine unless the space is nice and wide. So these are regulations we have to follow. Now maintaining sanitation from our design angle is by ensuring the flow or the movement of your patient through the space and the movement of your staff through the space. One area as an example I can give you is your OT complex. Now this complex has got many levels of sterility. You've got your dirty corridors, you've got your semi-sterile corridors, you've got your clean corridors. Now movement through these spaces must be unidirectional and they must not mix or cross. Your patient movement, your staff movement, they must all not cross because these are areas that are prone to different infections. Your hospital acquired infections are actually acquired here and in like this high level security areas. And how do you make a patient comfortable? You make them comfortable by them feeling independent. Like how doctor said, we need things like grab bars, you need guardrails and all other disabled friendly features. I'll just give you one example. A patient toilet in a hospital must always be dis disabled friendly. Every single patient toilet. Now that means it needs all its regulations of grab bars and uh, other features. And one main feature is the door opening into the toilet must be 900 mm wide minimum. And this door must always open outward. Now you might wonder why that is so compulsory. I will tell you that if a patient collapses inside that toilet, a person outside or a caregiver must be able to reach that patient without the fear of actually hitting them when they open the door. So every point that we mention as architects also, they all have a reason and an explanation behind. Now environmental theory is what we also call as patient friendly factor in a hospital. What factor actually makes a patient feel comfortable? And these are different features. One, there's comfort from nature, then there's comfort from the design we provide, and there's comfort, mm. yeah. and there's comfort, of course, from the people they interact with. Now, nature, as you all know, give us a calm feeling, a feeling of freedom. So this is actually very important because patients feel like they are prisoners in the hospitals they are in. They feel like they're locked up inside. So it is very important to give them access to good open spaces and we can do this by providing small parks, sm small uh, walking areas, green areas within your hospital complex. It can be just outside, accessible from your public areas. And this will give, and you can even conduct your uh, physiotherapy treatments over there. So this way they feel a lot more comfortable, a lot more free, and they don't feel trapped in the hospital. And in case your patient is someone you can't give access to the outside, then, then for your high risk patients who you feel are not, should not be allowed to go outside, for them provide nice large windows in their patient rooms. Then this way they can at least have a view of the beautiful scenery outside or view of the parks outside. Now, as architects, when we plan out a hospital, we must plan it such that there's minimum stress on a patient. Now, these stress cause, uh, the reasons that this stress happens is when you overcrowd a space 
or when you don't take certain basic measures. Now, overcrowding is a problem which we've all faced. And as architects, I've faced it a lot when I'm trying to convince a doctor that you need to space your beds apart. You need to give at least three by three meter space per bed. So the doctor will be like, no, 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 we can't, we don't have that kind of space. Please keep it all closer together. But I'm trying to say that when you keep them closer together, then if one patient has got machines around them, their family visiting, guests around them, this will automatically disturb the patient in the next bed. So nowadays we are trying to promote this concept of small wards. Have four to five bedded wards or have individual patient rooms. Now this will give them a sense of privacy, a sense of freedom and a similar comfort for them. And stress levels are of course much lower in this. And another thing we promote is positive distractions. These are just simple things like uh, beautiful artwork on the walls, aquariums, distractions for patients so that they don't focus too much on their illness and the medicines they have to take and positive feel for them in their environment. And then of course, comfort from interaction. People get a level of comfort and happiness from the people they interact with. And these, this falls actually only two categories of people. One is of course their family and the other is the caregivers of that hospital. So if you want to keep your patient happy, you must make their family happy and you must make the caregivers happy. Now, how do you make your, their family happy? This is possible when in the patient room, you provide a small area for the family and a place where they all can sit down or at least a couch or a bed where at least one of them can spend the night also. And then if you consider the staff angle, staff is very important for a patient to be happy. Now, only if the nurse is happy, the patient is happy. If the nurse is a tired person, she's not going to be able to take that extra effort to make the patient happy. Now, to make a nurse healthy and happy, you need to provide small break rooms, small nurse lounges, or even in your planning thing, the location of your nurse station. Don't make it such that they have to run long distances when they have to take care of a patient they have to reach. So it's these concepts which have been researched upon by many people, and these researches have been proved and then put into design, and that is what we call evidence-based design. Actually, nowadays, many universities abroad mainly have masters and PhD courses where people research on healthy environments, how to make hospitals healthy, like different themes based on how to design a good, healthy, patient-centric thing. I'll give you an example. There is a Dr. Roger S. Ulrich. He's actually a professor of architecture in a university in uh, Sweden. And he conducted an experiment called View Through a Window. Now in this experiment, he was just trying to show us the difference between a patient's rate of recovery depending on what they can actually view through their window. Now in this experiment, what he did was he took a 200 bedded hospital and he took one floor of IP patient rooms and divided that floor into two halves. Now 50% of the people in those rooms could see out of the window a blank brick wall and the other 50% could see good greenery, nice trees, and a brighter outside. What he maintained was that the, all the rooms should be of same sizes. The type of illness among the patients must be equally divided between these two areas. The type of uh, treatment provided to them must be similar. The nurses must be similar. Basically, the only difference between these two halves of patients were just what they saw through their window. And then he made notes of the results. And now I'll tell you, the patients who were looking out of the window and seeing bright sunlight, nice trees, they healed a lot faster. And this is because they did not have a problem of sleep, so they did not have to take sleep-inducing medicines. They did not have too much anxiety, so they did not have to take extra medication. And this extra medication summed up that they had a cheerful stay and a short stay in their rooms. The thing is, when they look outside and when that sunlight affects them, your sleep cycle is set. You look, even though now we all have watches, clocks, and things like that, if you can't see outside and actually see the sun setting or the sun rising, your body clock goes for a toss. You won't be able to wake up on time, sleep on time, and things like that. And this is when you actually take medication to help in that. And when all these medications are avoided, your patient heals a lot faster and heals a lot better. So based on that, we've 
d realize that before we design, we also do a lot of research on what are the researches already done. And by that, we can get different pointers, like different safety measures for patients, how to keep patients happy, how to reduce staff movement, reduce staff injury. Now the technology is so much that there are actually cranes that can lift a patient off the bed and put them in wheelchairs. Now it may not have come yet or not, but these are things that are there in our future. And this will help prevent a nurse from spraining their back or any like this possible injuries when you've got technology that is developing at such a rapid rate. Now I've actually got two examples. And these are actually uh, examples from my thesis during my college time. Now this is a hospital in Florida. It's one extreme of fancy. Now this is a children's hospital. So they made it a point that every floor has a theme. And that theme goes with its own color codes and ranges and type of pictures present around. So they've got like waiting areas with colorful furniture. They've got those uh, lounges with large windows. It's different features that keep children occupied. So it's like this floor is based on sports. Then they've got another floor on arts where they've got beautiful artwork. So your ICUs have got beautiful paintings. So children don't actually think that they're there for a treatment. They think that they're on a vacation over there. And then of course there are floors based on games. Now here they've actually spent enough that their MRI and CT rooms are really fancy with the machines itself having print and images on it. And similarly, the fourth floor, IP floor, where they've given large windows and they've given soothing colors and things like that. But I'll tell you now itself, even though this example has a lot of fancy things, I'm saying that you don't have to spend so much. Your only thing is provide that distraction. Provide a level of color, a level of picture, something, an aquarium in your uh, main lobby, bright colored sofas, anything that can distract the child or distract the patient from their pain or illness. So for that, I can give you one example. Your Child Trust Hospital here in Chennai. About four years back, the, they went through a renovation in which they had a flow for pediatric uh, care. And here, they just did basic things. They just put some uh, cartoon characters and uh, some Disney characters on the walls, decorative art, and small uh, mermaid features in bathrooms and things like that. That's all they did. It's not, my, not too much of an expense and it's an added effort that the kids actually liked being in that space, the bright colors, the bright lit corridors. So what I'm trying to say is whatever we do to make a place patient-centric, or I'll say now user-centric, because it's not just your patients, it's your nurses, your staff, everyone else. So to do this, you must incorporate these in your design stage itself. After you build your entire hospital, you won't be able to tell, let's tweak it up a little bit here, let's add this there. In your design stage itself, if you make all these necessary changes, then you've got a good, sustainable, viable design where your expenses are minimum and your patients are definitely going to love the space. So yeah, that's it. Thank you.